Hi, I'm Dan Winter, as you know, and I'm here with Mathieu from France, who leads the group who's sponsoring that big event. Uh, oh yeah, the, the, uh, the symposium, uh, I will be the speaker of the symposium uh, in uh, Rimoge, uh, in front of 3,000 people uh, in March 2024. And I'm owner of the ch YouTube channel Civilization 5D. <laughs> and the, the subject of today is I wanted Dan to talk about the transubstantiation and explain the process of uh, transubstantiation uh, and how um, uh, he can uh, speak about it in uh, um, electric way. Yes, exactly. I, I love it when Mathieu does that very sexy French accent, don't you? <laughs> I think I think the American girls are going to love it. No, that's not the point. No. Oh, yes, the point. Uh, also, Mathieu is a uh, is, uh, was very active in helping us with the event in tours with Elaine and Danan and knows all those people. And we've been having a great time. He's been hanging out here in South France. And the other thing we're doing with Mathieu, which relates exactly to transubstantiation, transmutation, isotope transition, is we're setting up a new project for kids called... Kidsloveralchemy.com. Kidsloveralchemy.com which relates to our FractalU.com and our uh, JediSchool.science, which is, you know that the first Harry Potter episode was about uh, Nicholas Flamel and alchemy for kids. Well, what is alchemy for kids? And what does it have to do with Mathieu's fun question, which is how to do transmutation, transubstantiation in your mind? <laughs> is that, do we have the right question? Is it all about alchemy? Is it all, all about charge collapse? You know that is my favorite word. No. There's a famous story, remember, when Sam Lentine, a PhD mathematician, a University of Rensselaer Polytech, teacher of the Psychotronics International, and he was born blind from birth, but when he visualized so clearly, remember he's blind, but he visualized so clearly the equation for the wave function of alcohol and projected that with intent into the water, they very clearly measured the spectral emission lines of that water went toward alcohol. In other words, that man turned water into wine. Ooh, that has been measured. Look it up, Sam Lentin, biological transmutation. So how did he do it? <laughs> the, other, the other clue of alchemy for kids here and uh, Mathieu's fabulous question is, um, <clears throat> you know, Remember, we've said many times, when the kids start to see without their eyes, and they all say the same thing, I saw a vortex, a plasma tube wormhole appear inside my head. And if they develop the inner muscle to squeeze the plasma vortex tornado inside their head, they're blindfolded, remember, then the plasma vortex tornado called consciousness <laughs> inside their head comes to a foci and forms literally an eyeball, an eye in the tornado. Now, what enabled them to make the inner muscle to squeeze that tornado, and this is the point, the physics of alchemy, transportation, and seeing without your eyes, is when their brain waves did that cascade, usually from alpha to gamma, the alpha is literally the same as the Schumann harmonics, which is called a phase conjugate pump wave caduceus, which is the squeezer. And so the alpha to gamma, that brainwave harmonic coherence is like a set of tensors, like a star mother kit, like a nest of platonics. That's the inner muscle, and those harmonics which form coherently in the brain enable that squeezing process, and it is all about the squeezing process. So now, back to Mathieu's question. You told me yesterday that they needed to visualize um, a special form with the golden ratio, and that make it the works done. They you can uh, put you can transform the water into alcohol. Well, a, a, a practical example of what Mathieu is saying would be the the central visualization of Reiki. It's called the dichomio, and this actually was supposedly an esoteric secret. But actually, if you look at the symbol for dichomio, and you'll see it at goldenmean.info slash kit, the star mother kit, the central glyph for Reiki, which is the dichomio, is an ancient Japanese sacred geometric waveform to literally trigger healing. Well, if you analyze that waveform, actually, and we'll have the model here, but if you take the, te the cube and you draw the line in its golden ratio to the edge of the cube at the right angle to start a pent dodeca embedding around that cube to put the cube in the pent. 
Where is the, the hex? Room? The hex in the pit. It's in, in the room with the. Uh, I thank you. Okay, good, good. In the uh, in the therapy room. So the line that connects that tetra cube to that pentodeca, the angle of that line. If you draw that and look at the shadow, you've got the dichomio, the sacred, ancient, sacred Japanese waveform to visualize in order to initiate centripetal implosion. The, the trick of that moment is how you embed the tetra cube in the pentodeca. So in other words, you went from hex to pent. Oh, thank you. Here it is. So I don't know if you can see it in here clearly, but right in the center here. Oh, you almost get it. Let's see if we do it here. Yeah, okay. See the little green in there? That is a cube, okay? So there's a cube in there. And the angle of this line in that cube, and look at this in more detail at goldenmean.info slash kit, which is about this star mother kit, how to make a star mother, which is how to make embedding why planetary orbitals and chemical electron shells all simply do this. The chemical electron shells, the nest of protons and neutrons in the nucleus, and the geometry of orbital mechanics is all about, and only about, functionally, this platonic nesting. The reason for that is because when you make platonics nest, you have to make golden ratio and you have to make implosion. So that's why when you visualize that sacred ancient Japanese dichomio, you're actually doing the major Reiki turning point to initiate healing, the squeezing of centripetal implosive forces in plasma, focusing with inner muscles on that tornado. So this now brings us most accurately, hopefully, to uh, Mathieu's question, which is how do you do transubstantiation in your mind? <clears throat> now, as a uh, homework assignment for this little video, I'm asking that you to go to goldenmean.info slash creation, and there you're going to see that the electron shells, all of your school's chemi chemistry classes, the electron shells are simply and only SPDF subshells. S suborbital is a torus, a simple, <laughs> two vortex. That's what, that's what it is, two electrons. The pi suborbital is a cube, six echelons, six, six vortex, six spin, six faces, very simple. And the DF suborbital, five, 10 pair, 714 electrons are the axes of symmetry of dodeca ecosa. In other words, your entire chemistry course was summarized by this and only this. You nest the platonics, you have SPDF suborbitals, and that's the whole atomic table. And that geometry is a torus, a tetracube, a dodeca ecos, a DF subshell. And you complete them all, and you have gold and noble and noble gases and you know the platonic, the plat platinum group metals, all the sacred phase conjugate negatropic noble gases and gold palladium platinum. It's all about when this is done. So Back to Matthew's question. <laughs> Supposing you wanted to transmute, transubstantiate. Um, another little piece of this puzzle is that uh, it has been worked out, uh, we've done the equations, that what isotope transition, sometimes called cold fusion, is in chemistry, it is literally nothing more or less than the non-destructive implosive charge collapse of the plasma in the cloud of the electron orbitals to enable the cloud to literally collapse non-destructively. It is exactly, and I mean exactly like the ice skater is spinning and her hands are out and she very slowly pulls in her hands and conservation of angular momentum means that she speeds up. <laughs> And she can't go in too far or she go too fast. <laughs> well, that's exactly what's happening when those electron shells are collapsing and doing this fusion. How do you get that charge collapse to be non-destructive? Now, Einstein died scratching his head, not knowing why objects fall to the ground, very specifically, and he said this because he couldn't figure out non-destructive charge collapse. Now, we know exactly what that is. It's called Planck Fire, P-H-I-R-E dot com. And that is that when you tune Planck, the musical key signature of the universe, and use Golan ratio multiples in this nest, you get charge collapse, the cause of consciousness and gravity. So the fusion process in your mind, you're actually, well, if you wanted to do this right, like Sam Lentine did, you would actually, okay, supposing 
Supposing you wanted to commute, transmute aluminum to silver. Now it happens that our group has the equations to predict the exact frequency and temperature for virtually every commercially valuable isotope transition in the atomic table. There's actually a frequency and temperature that we know by equation predict how to do fusion transmutation. It started the work with the work of uh, Elizabeth uh, Donovan, uh, Bill Donovan, and uh, it's a long story. And, and we have an isotope transition website. Point being that we actually know the frequency and temperature to accomplish isotope transition. But the reason, the reason there is a frequency is because there is a specific quantum distance, literally the number of rotations of that electron, it's, it's literally a count of a number of photons actually, which allow the electrons to collapse. So if you were doing this right, remember, the whole chemical atomic table, SPDF, is donut, S orbital, tetra cube, pi suborbital, and the DF, which are dodecahedron. equation. So this nest is the atomic table. So if you now knew the outer valence electron shell platonic, platonic symmetry, might want to do a little bit of chemistry because it's useful. It's the psychokinesis of your visualization. <laughs> so if you knew the sh actual shape of the outer electron shell, hint, gold, <laughs> dodecahedron, beautifully, precisely, all the noble gases. So if you knew the actual geometry of the shape of the outer electron shells, and then use those same inner muscles to accurately visualize the charge collapse in that tornado, right? the mind of the kids making this vortex and the alpha to gamma is squeezing that tornado and suddenly they can see without their eyes and they can lucid dream and they're clairvoyant. Well, that's called coherent longitudinal interferometry. So that visualization, the accuracy of that visualization for transubstantiation is based on accurately, meaningfully visualizing the shape of the electron clouds. Remember, when Leadbeater and Besant wrote Occult Chemistry, they predicted decades ahead of when they understood the geometry of the quark. The quark geometry was predicted decades ahead of time by Ledbury and Rassan, who did Psi Perception of Quarks. That's the title of the book. In physics, which later proven, they predicted subatomic, sub nuclear geometries decades ahead of time with their clairvoyance. Ooh, look it up in the chemistry literature, Psi Perception of Quarks by Phillips. And you'll see those references at goldenmean.info slash creation. Point being that occult inner perception of chemical process is real. So this is a bit of an intro. Did you have a question at this point? I'm guessing that uh, we don't, we, we cannot know how the, um, the forms that it takes to, to visualize it, but the, these, the, those kids can have uh, this, the shape by telepathy. They well, don't even need to know what it looks like. They just ask what they want to transmute to, uh, and then they can, I think they can do it. Well, yes, and what's proven by Leadbeater and Besant, occult chemistry, is in fact by inner occult, which I would call longitudinal coherent or clairvoyant inner perception. It is possible to dramatically reveal uh, physical chemistry. That's real. Mm -hmm. So if you investigate the atom that you want to know, <laughs> and the other thing is, you know, I have described some very useful physics here. You can visualize the chemical geometry and you can exert that squeezing pressure by visualizing accuracy. And the other, the other thing, which is far more psychological here is, remember, okay, so the inside of the atom is literally a nest of vortex tornadoes and nothing else. That's all it is. And, and remember, how does the shaman steer a tornado? Oh, yes, the shaman visualizes a tornado. And, you know, but actually, the key moment when the shaman steers the tornado, he calls it eating the hucha or eating the anger. What it means is the shaman feels the pain of the tornado so much that the tornado falls in love with the shaman and decides, oh, you're going to steer. <laughs> That's called embedding. You see the biologic, the bioplasmic streamers from the belly of the shaman embed in the tornado, and then he is the center of gravity electrically of that tornado because of love. <laughs> but, uh, but so how do you fall in love with an atom? Uh, but, but do they need to be in a gamma uh, wave? Well, you see... It? Or, uh, you see that that alpha burst uh, is not enough. Well, that's the point. In theory, here w what we learned is that all of the kids, or most of the kids, 
uh, who are able to steer uh, to steer tornadoes, who are able to see without their eyes, they start with a, a burst of alpha coherence, it's eight, around 8 hertz Schumann, and then there's a cascade of harmonics that looks like a caduceus, and the stepladder has octave harmonics and golden ratio harmonics, and that caduceus stepladder of harmonics, octave and golden ratio, goes from alpha to gamma in the 40s. And when they reach gamma, then the fun stuff happens. For example, the same frequency signature, but at much higher amplitude, is literally how Jean-Charles Moyen teleported regularly with witnesses proven, and we measure the brainwave scene. Extreme amplitude coherence, the same cascade. So that is the inner muscle to do the squeezing. So learning the alpha and that gamma series, flameandmind.com, would be a powerful step in this regard. And yes, it's true. I can make up to five harmonics in golden ratio, but I'm not very often able to climb all the way up to gamma, so I get some clear audience, but not too much clairvoyance, actually. So the gamma is important. The gamma is important, and uh, we can introduce uh, maybe the next video, because uh, I never did meditation of my life. I'm trying to do it, uh, and you will build a special program with uh, Prasma technology and stuff to increase uh, the potential uh, of people uh, and the training program of, of how they can reach gamma. And I will try this program. I, I think I will be the first one to try your program. <laughs> and uh, I will uh, uh, document uh, this program on the internet and uh, uh, in one here, if I can uh, uh, go to gamma, it means it, that it works. That's great, yes. Now remember that when you're measuring brain waves, normally you can't make alpha with your eyes open, so your eyes are closed. So how do you see when you did it? Because you got this beautiful screen, but your eyes are closed. But remember, Remember, there's two things. You can play it back later, but also we have two ways to help you that we can produce a series of tones in flameandmind.com which tell you you can hear in binaural bliss beat audio the moment when you reached alpha and the moment you reached gamma, you hear this little tone which is adjustable and you get the feedback loop to start knowing when you have success. That's called <laughs> biofeedback. And there's two ways to do that. You can have a simple tone that tells you when you have alpha and when you have gamma, but then you can have also an externally applied world's most powerful bliss binaural beat audio called Flame in Sound, which is very inexpensive, part of flameinmind.com. So there's two ways we can help you get there. And we're setting up more programs thanks to Alexa in Bali and other magic kids to prove that we can dramatically help you create that set of squeezing harmonics that implode the tornado. That's not just inner vision, but it's literally transmutation, transubstantiation, and <laughs> alchemy for, for kids, alchem, access to the black hole. Thank you, Dan. Merci beaucoup, Dan. <laughs> we, we had some fun. More to come. Uh, coming soon, uh, kidsloveralchemy.com. Blessings, blessings. Thank you.